Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two of Life Sciences Innovation Northwest. My name is Alexis Holzer. I'm the Assistant Director for Economic Development at Washington State University. And now I'm interviewing Chad Robbins, who is the CEO and President of Adaptive Biotechnologies Corporation. Good morning. Morning. How are you? Fine. How are you, Alexis? Good. So you just gave a presentation about your company. Can I you did. sort of recap that for us here? Tell us a little bit more about Adaptive. Yeah, I can. You know, Adaptive Biotechnologies is the global leader in immunosequencing, which is uh, high throughput sequencing of cells of the adaptive immune system, which are T and B cells. And so we developed a, uh, a first a research platform called ImmunoSeq that's used, being used by principal investigators in academia and biopharmaceutical companies in clinical trials um, to characterize the adaptive immune system. And now we're on the step where we're commercializing products uh, that are clinical diagnostics that can inform patient care. And we've started primarily in the area of oncology. Uh, our first application is for monitoring minimal residual disease in blood-based cancers. And now we're doing uh, a, a significant amount of research into uh, your host response within uh, the tumor microenvironment for solid tumors to characterize uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes or, or TILs. Um, and that has two applications, um, you know, one in kind of better staging of cancer patients and the other in, in potentially predicting a response to cancer immunotherapy or a specific immunotherapeutic agent. Great. So you're a spin out of the Fred Hutch. Can you tell us about uh, what that was like, your experience as a startup in Seattle? Uh, sure, I can. I mean, we spun out from the Fred Hutch um, five years ago now, but um, it was a wonderful experience. Um, the, 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 the center has been extremely supportive of what we've, uh, what we've done. Uh, we have a great working relationship. I would, I mean, I would say that we probably have 20 current collaborators um, at the Fred Hutch, including Stan Riddell and Fred Applebaum and Larry Corey and, uh, um, you know, Brent Wood and everyone that works there that is looking at uh, the adaptive immune system in a variety of contexts uh, really collaborates with um, adaptive, including one of the founders of um, our technology, Hootie Hoot Warren, still sends us samples, you know, almost on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. So... Why Seattle and why is Washington so great for collaboration? It's a big theme at the conference this year, partnerships. Washington is one of the best places in the U.S. to do research and education and healthcare. So can you tell us a little bit about why that is here? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can say I would put Seattle's science and collaborative community um, really at the top of the heap. I mean, we're, we're on par or, or, or better than Boston, San Francisco, um, and there's a... There's an infrastructure and a network within, on the science side, um, from the University of Washington, the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, um, uh, the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, uh, Swedish and Harborview, and and all the all the different networks that have come together, and it's really about um, kind of lifting lifting up uh, together and kind of looking at different areas of the science to collaborate to come up with a greater goal. I mean, for example, you know, we've been working with Mike Jensen at Seattle Children's um, on his kind of adoptive T-cell therapy approach to um, uh, childhood hematologic malignancies. Uh, and it's just been kind of a, a wonderful experience where um, we... In, in some cases, we will do pilot projects for for um, for free, just to ju you know, just to help the community. Um, but also, if you look at the infrastructure of new s new companies that are coming out of Seattle, between you know Juno and Immune Design, Integrated Diagnostics, um, obviously Adaptive Biotechnologies, a lot of us are working together uh, as well um, in a collaborative sense. That uh, you know, in, in some cases, kind of one and one can make three. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been it's been a wonderful experience. Experience uh, on the com on the commercial side, um, I, I do think we are we're trailing. Um, I, it, it, we are adaptive is massively expanding our operations, both our physical footprint and our and our human capital. Um, we're looking to double in size, going from uh, 55 to 120 people over the next nine to 12 months, which wow. is which is That's which huge. is a lot. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. And what we found is um, that a lot of the commercial talent um, doesn't reside here. And I think one of the reasons is um, kind of one of our last big anchor tenants, uh, Immunex, sold to Amgen years ago. And so that crop of kind of managers and product people mm -hmm. and 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 marketing people um, uh, hasn't really grown up in in the ecosystem um, and so what we found is we're in some cases we're having to uh, look at flexible working arrangements such as uh, uh, commuting and or using technologies you know Skype and whatnot and we're, we're 
the first objective is to hire the best people. Um, obviously, you prefer them to be in Seattle, um, but uh, you're going to hire the best people first and then figure out a way to make it work. At least that's my philosophy. Um, and so we've been doing that. And uh, we are, we're, we're looking uh, we're looking for commercial talent right now. Mm -hmm. How do you take a technological advance and a platform and technological innovation and convert that into products? Uh, that's the stage we're on in terms of commercialization, and we can use talent in that area. Great. So there's a problem. Do you see from your perspective, what are some possible solutions? Is it something that the WBBA can do? Is it the state issue? Is it mentorship that we need more of? What will help us grow that talent here in Washington? Uh, success. Um, <laughs> the, 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 there's a couple different areas. One is you look at um, Seattle Genetics is, is um, you know, growing and, and, and successful. And some of the companies that I uh, just mentioned are really coming up, you know, strongly. And, and the, the, the region is attracting capital. I mean, mm -hmm. I think between Adaptive Biotechnologies and Juno were the two largest um, uh, fundraising, private fundraising rounds uh, in the country, at least in our space, um, uh, over the last year. And so we, uh, we've attracted capital, and so now we're attracting people. Um, as, as more science paired with kind of that commercial success happens, mm -hmm. um, you'll start to see the, the, you're already starting to see kind of the, the kind of regional hub uh, start to take shape again. Um, Chris has done an excellent job um, from the WBBA, and if you look at from a legislate, legislative perspective, some of some of the tax initiatives um, that have been put in place that we could use, um, <laughs> we could we could we, we could use extension of uh, some of the policies. Um, that has been uh, that has been helpful to mm -hmm. an extent, um, but we clearly need more incentive within the region uh, mm -hmm. from a legislative perspective, uh, from an economic development perspective mm -hmm. um, that could continue to really grow us as as kind of a, a world class kind of national hub for a uh, global hub for biotechnology. Mm -hmm. So Life Science Innovation Northwest is a great place to talk about those needs that we that we have in the region. Um, next year, let's think a year out at Life Science Innovation Northwest 2015. What does that look like or what would you like to see at that conference to really help move the needle forward on some of these things? Um, I think there's potentially uh, some public market opportunities uh, for some of the companies that, that I've mentioned. I, I think that's going to you know, attract further attention to the region. Uh, I think there's some legislative initiatives that are on the docket now mm -hmm. um, that could you know, potentially, and, and ec economic development um, incentives um, that could attract uh, you know, further investment into the region. Um, but the, the ecosystem and the, the infrastructure, um, you are start, starting to see that to really grow. And, and in a year out, um, I, I think, again, is all predicated on success, right? Mm -hmm. The more successful companies we have that come out of the region, uh, the more companies are going to be incentivized to um, start start and grow up within and stay within the region. And I think that's I think that's starting to happen because if you look at the last few years, as opposed to the you know few years before that, there's been a, a huge growth uh, in opportunities. Mm -hmm. Some of that correlates with the industry in general, of course, but some of that correlates kind of with uh, with the region and the infrastructure of the region. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing to help that ecosystem? What can companies do to help each other grow? Are you helping mentor other companies, help them navigate the system? What, can, what advice can you give? Well, the, the first thing we're doing to help that ecosystem is hiring. I mean, mm -hmm. we're hiring people in the region. I mean, that, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything that can be done more, I mean, that you can do more things, but in terms of the most impact, it is actually bringing in talent to the region and hiring people in, into the region. Um, the second, yeah, we, we uh, in terms of collaborating, um, I, I, we collaborate with probably 10 to 15 uh, kind of local companies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, think of us as kind of the pickaxe for the gold rush or the routers for the internet. I mean, we have a technological platform, at least on the research side, that makes their discovery possible mm -hmm. or validates their, their, their technology or potentially their biopharmaceutical kind of uh, innovation, if you will. Um, so a lot of that collaboration um, helps. And then from a mentorship perspective, you know, I, I personally have spoken at the Foster School. Um, I'm involved um, with the, the STEM program at, at Bellevue College, I've, I've tr uh, not as much as I'd like to be, but um, I, I've tried to do things throughout the region mm -hmm. um, to, to, to give time to help kind of um, grow up the ecosystem. Great. Well, thank you so much for everything that you do and all the success on your company. So this has been Chad Robbins with Adaptive Biotechnologies at Life Science Innovation Northwest. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alexis. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah.